Hello everybody, this is Zach's at it again. I'm your host, Zach Cooley, and I'm honored to be here with one of my all-time favorite teachers, my sixth grade teacher, Miss Mildred Matz. Miss Matz, thank you for being with me today, and can you start off by telling me all the places that you have taught during your career as a teacher? Scott Memorial. That's you... the only place I taught. Okay. 26 years. 26. Yeah. And uh, the room on the corner, I'll never forget the room on the corner there. Were you right. always... you go in the door. Yeah. Were you always in that same room? No. Now, when Mr. Patterson was there, he would move me every year. Hmm. <laughs> and most of it was on that uh, floor, but one year I was downstairs. I think he moved us around at the end of the year, so we'd have to clean our rooms up and get rid of all of the junk and the old papers and stuff, which worked. And, and you know, so you went to a new room, you couldn't take all that old trash with you. You had to clean up. <laughs> right, right. And uh, most teachers, the, is is a run, usually is a run of 30 years. Yours was a little short. Is there any reason for well, that? Or is oh, it? yes, yes, let me tell you. Zach, when I decided to see I didn't go to college right out of high school okay and uh, we were living we got I got married in 1956 uh -huh. we lived in Roanoke uh -huh. and in that time I had my two children and in 1969 uh, my husband decided he wanted to move to Whipple back up this way and he got a job at the American Screw Company and we moved and Susan was in the third grade when we moved and Jason was in the first grade. They didn't have uh, kindergarten at that time. Mm -hmm. So I decided I wanted to go to college at the age of 32. What made you decide to do that? Well, so I could teach. I wanted to go into teaching. Why? Well, I don't know. Teaching is a worthy profession. Then you had a retirement plan coming up. Right, right. Some of the jobs you had. Now, I had been a secretary. It was interesting, too. I had, I was a issued a legal secretary. To, we had a, a lawyer in town, Mr. Tom Walker, in the, his office. And then when I got married, I went to move to Roanoke, and I worked for a lawyer down there. And this was interesting because the lawyer I worked for down there handled a lot of uh, traffic cases, and they were tried in the small court there, whatever you would call it. And I went to court with him several times and wrote down... I was a court reporter, I guess you'd say. Wrote yeah. down everything that was said in shorthand. Oh, so you were a stenographer then? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I was I was really good at that, that shorthand, let me tell you. They were all so nice to me. They would slow down and be sure that I was getting it written down. And, and they were just, you know, the people in the court, in the trial. They were just as nice as they could be. And, uh, and this was in Roanoke. Yeah, this was in Roanoke, yeah. We lived in Roanoke from 1956 to 1969. One time I had to transcribe them, and he always paid me extra for that. That was interesting work. Mm-hmm. And he handled mostly uh, automobile wrecks and stuff like that. I but I thought when Sears Roebuck opened up, I would go to work for Sears when they opened their store in Roanoke. I worked there maybe three years, something like that. And then my oldest son was born in, in January of 1961. And then Jason was born in November, the end of 1962. So I was kept very busy with two little ones. Right. You didn't have you didn't have any little ones for quite a while and then all at once here come both of them. And that was enough. Yeah. <laughs> it was nineteen sixty nine. Richard decided he wanted to come back up here to live. He'd had enough of Roanoke. Uh, and, and we enjoyed living in Roanoke. I did. And he went to uh, work for the American Screw Company. I think that's when they first moved to Whistle. Our first opened up down there. What so, uh, what made Richard want to move to Rono? Well, he was working down there already. Okay. He got out of the army and he went to Roanoke and went to National Business College and he just stayed down there. Mm -hmm. 
He worked for a furniture company in the office. He was new, computers were new at that time, and he had been had some training on computers in, in when he was in the army. Mm-hmm. Then he went to work at Allstate Insurance, okay. and from there we he moved we we moved to Whistle, and he went to work at the American Screw Company. They had. Hadn't been up there too long, hadn't been open too long. So I decided, well, with the kids both in school, then I should go to school, use my time well. And I'll have to say, Zach, that I had a wonderful next door neighbor. She helped me a whole lot with watching my kids after, you know, when school was out in the afternoon and she played, they played with her kids and and somehow I got through this. Don't ask me how, I don't know how on earth I did this. I had to go back to school and take algebra. Oh my goodness. When I was in high school, we didn't have to take algebra. Right. And can you believe that? So I went to the community college and took two quarters of basic algebra. That was here in Whistful? That was here in, there in Whistful. Yeah, I went to WCC for two years plus the basic algebra, and then I transferred to Radford. And all of this with two kids in school, and I went to school summer and winter all year long. Mm -hmm. And I drove to Radford and back. I I went to Radford uh, two years. Out of that two years, I did my student teaching. Right. And I did that at Spiller. Oh. And I majored in special education. Wow. But with special education, you could teach the, the special education, and you could teach, you were also certified in grades one through seven, not not kindergarten. So I taught special education one year, and I, I told Mr. Patterson it was not for me. And uh, he just did away with it the next year for some reason. I mean, that was, wasn't right, but he gave me math to do, and that was my worst subject. Mm-hmm. And I said, Mr. Patterson, I don't want to do sixth grade math. I said, on the, or some kind of state test we took, I said, I scored the least, the lowest score of any of any of my scores was in math. I said it, I said it was 79%. And he said, well, on all of the ones that we had in here, he said, you had scored the highest on math. <laughs> that was the lowest of any of my scores, but he said I scored the highest on, on math of the people they had tested. So, so you were still the pick of the letter then? Yeah, yeah. At least that's what he told me. Um, well, I... Going through the old yearbooks from Scott, and there you were in my homeroom. That's right. Sixth grade. That's right. That would have been yeah. 19, that would have been nineteen ninety six and ninety seven. I think that's right. Yeah. And, uh, I was looking through the the little yearbooks that we had, and that right there you were. Yeah. And, and we had a special bond right away. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and in, in the early in the morning, you know, I hadn't gotten that gotten grouchy yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some days, some days I would come in and you would say, I feel mean this morning. I think I'll add some extra math problems onto, oh, well. uh, onto the assignment. But no, not usually. Not usually. <laughs> that we, uh, uh, I did a, when uh, Tina Turner passed away last year, um, last May, I did a podcast with Janet Martin, because oh. Janet, Janet took me to see her in uh, 1997 in the summertime, the summer after we were in your class. And Janet was my age when I was in your class. We were talking, we were reminiscing, you know, and she took me to Charlotte to see Tina Turner, and that was the first concert I ever went to. And, oh. uh, and we had we had an extra ticket, and... She actually called you to see if you wanted to go with us, but uh, oh. you you had uh, decided again either you had something else to do or didn't feel like making the trip or something. But well, 
Yeah. But it, that would have been good. I'm sure it was, yeah. I mean, no, she was wonderful. Uh-huh. It really was nice of her. I remember it was on her birthday, so my mother paid for her ticket since she was taking me as her birthday gift. And, uh, oh. and uh, so... Well, that's great. Yeah. I fought just about as long as I could with my health. I had some health problems there right after the mm -hmm. turn of the century. Yeah. And uh, it was good that I got out, you know. Uh, yeah. And then gave me and Richard some time together, and uh, he died then, of course, seven years later. Right. Very and we had... We did some traveling together. You, we've I've talked a lot about Richard, but uh, I met uh, Richard at at uh, our Christmas party that year, and uh -huh. and instantly uh, felt a kinship with him as well. I uh -huh. Thought yeah. he, thought he was very special. And oh yes, yeah. and and uh, he. Quite a conversationalist and got along with everybody, you know. And mm -hmm. and he's been gone now. Well, I guess it'll soon be eighteen years. Yeah, yeah. The so last April, twenty ninth of April. Just a just a I month. Just a month shy of your fiftieth anniversary, if I recall. Well, yes. Uh huh. Uh, if he had lived. 31, 32 more days, we would have been married 50 years. Oh, bless. And, and we were planning that we had already had reservations and a tape for a trip, our, our trip. Uh, we were going to Ireland. Oh, bless your heart. And uh, I, had, I had to pay that, you know, of course, get a refund on that and couldn't go. And somebody... Somebody suggested I should go anyway, and I thought, well, I'm well, not going to enjoy it. Why would I want to go right. this summer or something, you know, that, and and by myself, you know. So I yeah. just canceled that, and I have not traveled since. So. Well, uh, tell me about some of the places you and Richard did travel to when you had... Well, now, the last three years he lived, um, in two thousand. Three, three, four, and five. Okay, two thousand. What did I say? Three. Two thousand three. That's the year I graduated. Yeah, we went to the New England states. Took a state, you know, a tour all through the New England states, and mm -hmm. then the next year, oh four, we went to Alaska. Mm. And that was a good trip, but it was the year they had all the forest fires up there. And uh. it was so smoky, you couldn't see a lot of things. But uh -huh. it was a good trip. And then uh, in 06, we went to Hawaii. Wow. And uh, that was the last. Uh, of course, I had traveled quite a bit before. We tra we, he traveled with me or uh, Miss Grubb. Oh yeah, Miss Grove and her husband, they traveled some along with us and Now uh, who is Miss Grove? She taught fifth grade at Scott. Oh, is that, that was, is that Lucille Grubb? Yeah, Lucille Grubb. Okay. I remember her. And when I broke my leg that year, she did a long term sub substitute for me. Right. That was the year before I retired. I, I rem think. I remember that. That was the year after yeah. I was in your class. Right, I, I took the. I, I was I was out seven weeks at the end of school. Right, and uh, she she did a good job for me. But you know, and this was one of the things I wanted to tell you about. You you asked me, you know, why I decided to teach, and I was right. thinking about this, and I thought, well, I always loved to learn. <clears throat> I loved books, reading. And having been, had my elementary school in a one-room schoolhouse, we didn't get a whole lot of teaching. I didn't do a lot of learning of, of, of a constructive kind anyway. Right. Uh, so when we did get to go to high school, it was just like, wow, you know, they've yeah. got books libraries and and we can do all kinds of things we yes. can just learn and learn and, and it was just uh so so good 
Going to, always, going to high school was like going to college in those days, wasn't it? Right, right. Oh, from Bland County. I mean, we walked to school, and they only had like one through seven at the school. Right. And they didn't even take the kids from Little Creek to Bland High School for several years. This one man got a deal with uh, the school board, and we went to Pulaski. So, man, when we went to Pulaski to high school, it was like, wow, you know, they've got libraries and they, they've got books and and different rooms for different teachers and all this. And I really enjoyed it and uh, the learning. And I always thought, well, that's something you you can keep doing all your life is learning, reading or taking classes or whatever. And so yep. when I, when we, like I told you before, when we moved to Whistle, I decided, you know, I think I'll, I'll just go back to school and learn mm-hmm. some more and go to teaching and that I will have time then to do some traveling in the summertime. And uh, I guess that's why I went into teaching, was to share my learning and share my experiences and have time to travel. The year before, uh, right before I was in your class, you had been to London, as I recall. Well, yeah, that was the first trip I made was to London. I, well, I've been to London several times. And well, you'd, you'd hurt your shoulder, I think, at that. Oh, yes. Well, that was in England, yeah. Mm-hmm. I fell right on my face, I think, that time. Broke my hand, I believe it was. Yeah. Maybe I did hurt my shoulder, too. No, I, you were in a sling, so it must have been your hand, so. Yeah, uh, I fell, my my chin hit my hand and broke a bone in my oh. hand. And I got to experience their form of um, medical care. <laughs> you know, they had socialized medicine. Right. And, uh, you know, I brought that back and I shared uh, the information and shared it with the kids. And I had showed them the x-rays that I had made. And I don't think you were in my class then. Uh, the... Uh, x-rays that I'd had made in England and what they look like and uh, you know it was just kind of a little lesson for them they were very interested in yeah. it <laughs> so uh, never never pass up a chance you know to learn something and share it yeah it was very interesting now it, yeah. was, it was interesting to me that you said that you taught special ed one year and found out that it wasn't for you and right. um, I just wondered if that um, if that background uh, if that wasn't why uh, you and I hit it off so well is you had maybe a special affinity for disabled students. Um, well, yes, uh, I did, and um, I tried not to differentiate between any of the children. I tried to treat them all the same. Oh, but, you know, that, that kind of gets, you know, it gets, it's hard sometimes when you got one that's pretty, well, mischievous, we'll say, and uh, mm-hmm. hard to treat them like the ones that really behave well. <laughs> but uh, well, uh, you, I don't think I was ever too tough on them. Oh, I don't think so. I think, I think <laughs> you, you, uh, you you were very much a straight shooter, but you always made me feel very special. Well, you were special. Always you know. made me feel very special. But each child, I guess, is special in their own way. And and coming back to Janet Martin, when I was talking to Janet, she said that. If there was a school assembly, she said, I could not sit close. Uh, she said, I could not sit close to Miss Matt's or, and, or we couldn't look at each other because if, if I looked at her, I'd get tickled. Yeah, we'd misbehave, wouldn't we? <laughs> and she said, the three of us, you, me, and her, we were sort of like a team, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
this was actually my seventh grade year, but I remember that I sang in uh, the school talent competition. I sang Heard It Through the Grapevine, and everybody was talking about how that you cried when I sang, and I don't know if you cried because I did well or if you cried because it was painful to listen to. But. Oh, it was because you did well. <laughs> was was Did you have a, a shirt on that, that said something about the great vine or you, something? You gave me a shirt that you had. Oh, okay, that, okay. That had the California Raisins on it. Yeah, that's right. And that's it, right. And it said her through the great vine. I'm pretty sure I still have it. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember it now. But, okay. You know, I had no use for it. Don't think I could wear it. And I thought, I don't know why we came up with that, but I thought, well, I'll just share that and give it to. Uh, Zach. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you 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 gave it to me when they invited me back um, to the PTA to to sing uh-huh. to sing it at the PTA. You brought Richard. Uh huh. And I remember Richard and my great grandmother. She was in the back row, and she was clapping her hands along to what I was singing. And then Richard started doing what she was doing, and next thing you knew, it went on down the line, and everybody was doing it uh, before I was done with the song. Uh, and uh, that's just uh, a very special memory that I remember that you're connected with, and and you gave me you gave me that shirt, and and I've always uh, and I, I always treasured that always treasured on my relationship with you. You were always very special. Well, I felt the same way, you yeah. know. You were special. And one of my favorites, you know. And Janet Martin was, you know, she and I, yeah. were, she and I were very close. She was only eight I had that that uh, that stayed with me for three years. Mm-hmm. And then she became a teacher. Right. In, in Carroll and Grayson County, but but that was a, you know, middle school was, middle school can be very difficult. That yes, was, I was going to say, it's a, it's a difficult age for children. Yeah. Students, I guess I should say. Middle, I mean, you have the whole levels, you know, of development. Some of them are very grown up and mature, and some of them are still just little kids, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, it's, and an, it's an interesting group, though. Yeah. And had you had you worked uh, other than your year in special ed and me being in your class, had you worked a lot with disabled students? No, huh? So it was just so that was kind of new territory then, I suppose. Well, yes, it was. Of course, when I did my student teaching, now I did half of it with uh, Mrs. Sheritz, who uh, she had the special ed children. Mm-hmm. And uh, really and truly, uh, they were, you know, that some of them were just slow, like kind of slow learners. Right. And uh, they needed more help. They needed special uh, assignments, maybe. And uh, I went three years high school at Pulaski, and then I came to Whistle and stayed with my brother. And mm-hmm. finished. I uh, finished at George Webb. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you, you, uh, you, and Richard both grew up in Little Creek, right? And that's where you I, are now. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, of course, I was six years older than me. I guess six or seven. Richard was. He, Richard was six yeah. years older than you. Uh huh. So how did the two of you meet? Well, we live close. Our families live close together, which is why I kind of knew him all his life. He knew me all my life, and so it was love at first sight. I I don't know. I couldn't. I, I don't think so. He was so too much. He was older than me, uh, you know. Yeah, six or six or seven, something like that. And uh, and he went in. He was in the army, and uh, we didn't date or anything until after he got back from the army. 
Okay, so maybe it was the soldier thing it had something to do with. It. <laughs> Could have been, I don't know. <laughs> so, so you had two children. Yes. Uh, no. no grown a boy. Uh, no, no grandchildren though. I have one grandson. Oh, you do have a grandson. All right. I have a grandson. He will be graduating from college. Oh. Next, next uh, month, I guess. He's already finished up all his classes, and they sent me a picture of him in his cap and gown. Oh, uh, he's in, he graduating. He's graduating from the from Washington State University. Oh, amazing! And he is ended up out there because he was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So he spent six years in the Navy and five years. Well, four years in college. Oh, so how old is he then? He's twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Uh huh. So, so that that's good. So then Richard knew him and everything, and saw him grow up. And yeah. Uh huh. He was about ten or eleven when Richard died. Mm, it's hard to. Be... And he stayed with us a whole lot when he, you know, when he wasn't in school. They lived in Lynchburg at that time, and uh, he's. He spent quite a bit of time with us in the summertime and when he was off. And uh, well, what's I mean, his what's his name? His name is Eric. Eric. All right. Well, I uh, I know you're very proud of him. I started teaching and with full in seventy three. I believe it was nineteen seventy three to ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I believe that's right. Um, but uh. After about eight years, I think it was since 1978, I started working on my master's degree. Oh, and uh, I did that from Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, they brought it to Wythe County. You know, the guy came up every Thursday, or the woman, the professor came, the teacher came up every Thursday evening and we had classes so i think we finished that in 83 you know it was a long time with taking one class at a time mm -hmm. and uh it was hard on thursday because thursday i always found the kids were noisier and livelier and uh, all of that well I could, could say they were mean, you know. They were the meanest on Thursday that they ever were, but I don't really mean that. Um, so, and Friday, then, they were they were calmer, you know. They were just looking forward to Friday. And, and I thought, oh, on Thursday, I have to be ready to present this thing to to the professor or something, and these kids are just so noisy. Yeah. <laughs> I made it, you know, I made it. And uh, like I said, I, I like to go to school, I like to learn, and I like to share it. Right. Yeah. The kids came up to my desk before school started in the, before time, you know, classes started in the morning, and we talked. Now, I could have used that time to get my lessons ready, but they want us to talk. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that was important. Well, it's been nice talking with you. Love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.